Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be showing you how I create these simple bookmarks with the scrap paper that I found at home. So the size might be a bit weird, it's 15.5 by 11.5 centimeters. So I'm just going to divide this into three, which comes to measurement of 5.6 centimeters each, but you might be using a normal piece of paper so you don't have to follow my exact measurements. You can just round the numbers off but people tend to ask me specific measurements, so I'll just list them here in case anyone would like to know. So I've divided the piece of paper into three and I just rolled it off with pencil. You can keep it as a rectangle, but I want to change up the shape a bit, so I decided to take two centimeters down and line all three bookmarks at once. I want to create a tag shape, so I'm going to take in a bit off the sides for the tip. I didn't measure this in the beginning because I want to just eyeball the proportion that I like, and then take the measurement which comes to another weird number of 1.2 centimeters from either side. Again, you can change it up, but I'm just going to measure the same size for all of the sides and for all three bookmarks, and then connect the points together so I have them ruled neatly for me to cut. So here I'm using a blade and I'm going to use scissors for the tips because they're nice and small to cut, but you can use anything you have, you can just use scissors for this if you would like to. So let's move straight to the first flower. This one is very simple. I'm just going to create single thin strokes to create each of the petals and I'm going to shape it in such a way to create sort of like a half circle. Then at the bottom I added more curved lines a bit shorter than the petals to create the leaves and then the bulb at the bottom which I'm going to round off and attach everything to a very thin stem. So here's the silhouette that I'm looking for. Those shapes that I'm creating as the petals, they're just going to be single strokes as you paint them later on. So you can also try to draw it out with just single strokes with pencil if that's a bit easier. And then I just followed with the rest of the features. You can also change up the silhouette of the flower depending on the angle you're looking at. So the half circle can either be thinner or even rounder, more like an oval or a circle if you would like. I'll just draw them out as an example for you. I followed these up with tiny leaves on the side. I also add a couple of other elements, which are the young bulbing flowers that I draw as ovals with leaves underneath and a wiggly stem. Then I finish everything off with thin, long, and short grass at the bottom. For these dandelion flowers, the colors that I'm going to be using are permanent yellow deep, terra verde, and sepia. I'm going to start with just the permanent yellow deep and I'm looking for a consistency that is sort of a medium to a thick consistency, so I don't want it to be too watery. I'm using my size 2 brush here, but you can also use a smaller brush if it makes it a bit easier for you to control. For the flowers, I'm just going to create the same shapes as I did with pencil, but only using single curved strokes to follow the silhouette of either the half circle or the oval bunch together. I'm just going to scatter some of the yellow dandelion flowers around the area of the paper before adding the other features and I also like to vary the size. You don't have to fill in too much because you can always add more later on. I just like to have a few to work on at the same time. I like to place the larger ones at the top and at the bottom I tried to place smaller ones so they're a bit shorter and younger flowers. And after I have a few flowers, I'm going to make the green color which consists of the terra verde with a little bit of sepia to mute it further. I'm using the same consistency as the flower which is a medium to thick consistency because I'm going to be creating the same strokes but this time I'm placing them underneath the flower to create those tiny little leaves. I'm just going to do this for all of them. 
Next, I want to be adding the bulb. And for this, I'm using the same color, but notice that I added much more water to this because I want the consistency to be very light. And this way, the color of the bulb will be much lighter than the leaves itself. So you'll see that it's puddling a little bit, which is why it looks quite dark. So I went in with a dry brush to pick up the excess paint. And after I pick up the water, you'll see that the color is much lighter this time, which separates the bulb and the leaves. After that, I continue to paint the stems using the same color mixture, but I used the thick consistency that I used for the leaves. So your brush stays at a dry brush consistency, which comes to a finer point that is easier to control. However, if that's still a bit difficult, you can also switch to a smaller brush like what I'm doing here. Use the same very thick consistency so your brush is fairly dry, and then use the very tip of your brush to drag it downwards and create those wiggly stems. As for the young bulbs, I used the same thin consistency as I did for the bottom of the flowers and I just created an oval shape with that and then continued with the thicker consistency green to paint the leaves at the bottom just as I did with the flowers. So here I see that the space is still quite empty so I'm just going to add a few more flowers. You can keep on going back and forth but I like to work with a few at the same time. I just try to not fill in too much in the beginning so it's easier for me to control the composition. Next I'm going to be creating the grass and for this I'm going to use a mixture of terra verde with a permanent yellow deep to create a yellow green color that is a bit brighter than the stem and the bulb. And I'm just going to drag my brush upwards. I try to make the tip of the grass a bit pointier so I use more pressure for the thicker part and as I get towards the tip I apply less pressure and slowly pick up my brush to create the thinner point. After this, I also added the tiny leaves on the stem using a thin consistency of the terra verde and sepia. So this is pretty much done, but on the bottom left corner, I felt like it's looking a bit too empty. So I just added another bulb for the composition to balance it out a little bit more. And I'm going to call this first one finished. Next, I'm going to create the silver dollar eucalyptus. This one is super easy. We're just going to create circles and ovals facing different directions for the leaves while varying the size. And before adding the stems, I'm just going to place a dot to indicate where the stem of the leaf is going to face. And then I'm going to connect them together with the stems. And just like before, you can always add additional leaves after that to fill in the rest of the space. I'm also going to use three colors for this one, which are permanent yellow deep, cobalt green, and sepia. I'm going to be mixing all three colors in different ratios, so I'm just activating the paint and placing all of them in a thick consistency on the palette, and then to start off, I want to create a very thin consistency of a green. It can be more of a yellow green or more of a bluish green if you add more cobalt green in the mix. And I'm using this thin consistency to start painting the circles and the ovals. I like to vary the colors as you can see here. So for the bluish green, I would add more cobalt green, whereas for the yellow green, I would add more permanent yellow deep into the mixture. And as for the sepia, it should act as a color to mute those greens slightly. While the surface of the leaves are still wet, I'm going to go in with a thick consistency between a mixture of all these three colors and I'm just going to place the dots on the edge of the leaves where the stem is going to be. For this, because we are going to work with a wet surface, I would suggest to only create a few leaves at a time 
so they don't have enough time to dry off and that way the dot that you're going to place on the leaves will travel out slightly creating that softer transition and then using the same color i'm just going to connect all of them to the stem so that's pretty much it for this one i'm just going to continue the same method to fill in the rest of the page you can also try this out on a scrap piece of paper first to find the right wetness of the surface if it's too wet chances are that dark dot will spread too much so you want a slight sheen on your paper without it puddling too much For the stem, just like the previous flower, you can use a small brush like what I'm using here and also use a very thick consistency so your brush can come to a very fine point. For some of the long stems, I like to add a few darker leaves by using a slightly thicker consistency than before and I'm just going to place small sized ones so it doesn't distract from the lighter leaves. I'm just going to use these to fill in some space and balance out the composition. For some of the loose leaves, I'm just going to connect them with the stem again and that's pretty much it for the second bookmark. For the last bookmark, I'm going to create berries. These berries are very easy to paint though this would require layering, but as for the shapes, the berries are practically just circles with white highlights that you can either create as you paint by leaving out white negative space or you can also paint circles and just use a white gel pen or white gouache to paint on top of the round berries as highlights. You can use any method that is easier for you. Then after drawing out some berries, I just added leaves to somewhat frame the berries. I'm just doing very basic leaf shapes and also varying the size without thinking of folds or anything complicated like that. Then once I have a few, I connect them all with the stem. This time, the stem is more rigid which means they are a bit more straight than curvy and slightly branching out following the placement of the leaves and berries. For this one, I'm going to be using four colors which are Quin Red, Pansy Yellow, Terra Verde, and Sepia. I'm going to start by painting the berries first and for that I used a mixture of Hansi Yellow with Quin Red to create an orangey red color. I tried to slightly vary the ratio so some berries might look a bit more orange while some are a bit red. And I just placed the berries one by one by placing them fairly close together. I started with my size 2 brush but I decided to switch to the smaller one so it's a bit easier for me to control. This is what I meant before by leaving out some white negative space as the highlight, but if you accidentally colored all of the circles, that's also okay because you can always go back in with a white pen or with white gouache, something that's more opaque so the white highlight can be visible on top of the paint. I tried to paint a few clusters of berries, so I've painted the one on the top left. Now I'm going to go in with the same thing on the bottom right hand side. Thank you. 
For the color of the leaves, I'm going to be using a mixture of Hansa Yellow, Terra Verde, and also Sepia. The Hansa Yellow should make the green a bit more of a yellow green and give it a bit more warmth, while the Sepia should mute it. I'm just again going to play with a different ratio, so all of the greens might be slightly different, and that's okay. I really like variation with these types of loose paintings and this is optional but if I catch the leaves to still be slightly wet I try to add a slightly darker value of green to dot at the tip just like what I did with the eucalyptus. So I'm just going to keep adding the leaves and varying the size and I might even add a bit more berries wherever I need to if I feel like the space is a little bit too empty. After I have the majority of the area filled, I'm just going to start adding the stems now because this will give a good indication of where I need to add more berries and the leaves in terms of the placement. So I'm just going to continue on to some of the leaves and the berries and connect them together into two branches. It doesn't matter, you can make more branches, but I just felt like making two branches coming from either side to give somewhat of a natural composition. So from here, I can start to see where I can add more leaves and I'm also going to add more berries later to balance out the composition. Just like before, I used a very thick consistency when I paint the stem to get better control and as for the color, I used a mixture of terra verde and sepia if you've missed it. After painting a few, I realized that the color, like usual, have faded when it's dry, so I'm just going to do another layer. And for this, you don't have to be as accurate, I'm just adding some and I'm not going to color in the whole thing fully. However, if you're using more of an expensive paper like Arches, you might not have to do this because they take in the paint a bit differently and the paint tend to be a bit brighter. So this would depend on the current stage of your painting and depending on the paper that you are using also. However, if you feel like you need to add a bit more vibrancy, don't be afraid to keep layering on as long as the previous layer is dry so it won't disturb the base layer. I'm going to do the same thing for the leaves and for this one I chose any color that I have on my palette which are the greens to layer on a bit of detail. I decided to add very roughly the veins and the midrib without painting fully one by one and sometimes I just paint half of the leaf to show that the leaves are not completely flat. To finish everything off, I like to add tiny little leaves just to balance out the composition like what I did with the eucalyptus previously. And that's pretty much it for the third and final bookmark. Once I have all three paintings ready, I'm going to use a pencil to eyeball the middle of the bookmark at the top. You can also do a cross instead of just one line if you need the extra guideline. And I use a cheap plastic hole punch, which was the only thing available for me at that point. And I just look for the line through the hole and try to place it in the middle to get the right placement. Like I mentioned, you can also use a cross to give better indication of the depth if you need to.
For the string, you can use any ribbon you have available. I initially used a gold ribbon, but I like the rustic look more, so I decided to switch to this natural brown rope. You can vary the length, I just eyeballed mine and I cut three for each of the bookmarks. I initially created a knot, but I thought about it more and decided that this loop was much easier to create, and the rope also looks a bit neater that way. So what I do is fold the rope in half, and I put the curve inside through the hole until you see a loop, then place the two ends of the rope through the loop and pull it until it reaches the paper. And here are the finished bookmarks. I hope you guys enjoyed these simple designs for easy doodles or if you're a beginner to give painting a go. Like usual, all of the tools as well as my social media links will be listed in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!